How the devil are you, all right? <laughs> Excellent. Lovely to see so many of you here this evening. Quite an international crowd, I understand. A few Australians and so on in. Some of you may be struggling to place my accent. It is, in fact, educated. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll go slowly. I am... Um, <laughs> I'm not from anywhere very exotic. I live in a part of town you may know as East Dulwich. Other people prefer to know it as Peckham. <laughs> Doesn't really bother me. The trouble is that a lot of people have never been to Peckham, but they formed an opinion about Peckham because they've seen Peckham on Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> so they think they know all about it. The fact is, if that is your only experience of Peckham, television has a way of glamorising neighbourhoods. <laughs> Peckham is not quite as lovely jubbly as you may have been led to believe. Short on entertainment, we have a few outdoor street entertainers, mainly working in the medium of lager. <laughs> there with their amusing requests for money every day, but... Uh... <laughs> oh, they're good people, I have to be fair, they're nice people. We have some winos at the end of our street, I get on fine. One of them even calls me son, which I think is a charming, if unlikely, scenario, but... Uh... <laughs> He means well. I have nothing against, you know, obviously, people drinking out of doors, that's fine, and I certainly wouldn't legislate against it. And um, it's possible some of these people are homeless. We've heard about that, of course. Homelessness is tragic. We're all to blame. And so on and so forth. But, uh... You <laughs> share my shame, sir. But, uh... <laughs> a few things do puzzle me about this homelessness thing. Firstly, why, if you're homeless, you would choose to stay in Peckham? <laughs> But surely the one advantage of being homeless <laughs> is that nothing is tying you down to Peckham anymore. <laughs> yes, a shock at first, I grant you, but you get over it, don't you? Collect a couple of coupons from the newspaper, you could be in the south of France by the weekend, but... <laughs> there they stay, I don't know. Nostalgia or inertia or something, I don't know. One place they feel superior to the residents, perhaps. As well. <laughs> Second thing, and this I just think is a bit unfortunate, really, that the favourite drink of the homeless should be a beer called Tenants. <laughs> Does that not strike them as ironic? <laughs> On top of everything else, probably spent the night under a bus shelter. Pissed your trousers rigid. <laughs> At least you hope it was you. You, uh, <laughs> you wake up in the morning, struggle into a shop, plaster a smile across your face. Tenants, please. <laughs> and not just tenants either, but tenants. Super. <laughs> tenants, super. Homeless. Bugger. <laughs> they probably tried homeless bugger. They probably uh, tested it on some focus group. It didn't test well. You know, people don't like things that are pessimistic or realistic. They try and make you think it's a bit aspirational. They make the homeless think they're buying into a lifestyle they can't really afford. So, <laughs> a couple of swigs think, ah, oh, one of these days, eh? <laughs> I'll tell for it myself. You might be able to see this. This is uh, what is known as a diver's watch, apparently. Good for up to 100 metres of water pressure. Costs quite a bit of money as a result. Complete waste of money. The only diving I ever do, it's considered very bad manners to check your watch, but there you go. <laughs> I must admit the luminous dial has come in handy, so... If I ever, one, if I ever find one 100 metres deep, I'm going to be backing off, I think, but... Uh, anyway, though the Peckham is not that bad, I'm, I'm probably playing it down a bit. I, I live in a rented house there, it's... Uh, I have looked into buying a house, you've probably all heard that London property prices are going crazy at the moment, estate agents are springing up everywhere with their... We are delighted to be offering for sale. We are honoured to be sole vendors in the case of this. We came in our pants when we saw it. <laughs> Peckham has remained aloof from this kind of spree. The market remains a little sluggish in Peckham. It's more a case of we are frankly disappointed still to be trying to shift. <laughs> Well, I've stayed with the rented property, but I brightened it up with a few ornaments which I bought myself, mainly from the back pages of the Sunday magazines. I've got one of those plates to go on the wall with a um, red Indian chief in full battle dress. 
riding a Labrador. <laughs> Bit of a mix-up on the order form, that one, I think, but um, two world-class renderers in their field coming together. And we've got some of those little um, Victorian figurines that go on the mantelpiece. They're rather nice. We've got a little one called Feed the Birds. This woman with sort of pigeons all over her. And, um, that's the other one. Uh, there's a little flower girl called Blooming Lovely. Uh, one called Feeling Lonely, Sir. Which is a little whore. I actually tried to get her first trick, but that had sold out. So this is about a conversation. It's supposed to be quite graphic, that one, but didn't get it in there. But, uh, but my favourite, this costs quite a bit of money, uh, and it eats up batteries, but well worth it. It's a little remote control Thora Heard on a stair lift. <laughs> Fantastic thing, about three foot of track, couple of sets of points, keep it interesting. It's got a siding, a little shed she can winter in, that sort of thing. Three little remote control, up and back. A friend of mine bought a Raymond Baxter, brought it over, suggested we race them, he was quite confident, but... Put a bit of money down, but he was surprised. Baxter is very good on the straights. Heard took him on the corners. No <laughs> centre of gravity, that's the thing with your herd. And you can't go too fast, or so they fly off the end and frighten the cat. <laughs> so, I will just mention this, incidentally. I own a cat. I don't know... Probably some of you here own cats and have experienced this. If you know somebody who has a cat, please don't regard that as an opportunity to buy them a shit cat-related present. <laughs> Every birthday and Christmas that comes round, the cat, the bowl, the collar is all we need, really. People buy me little cat poetry books and cats. Somebody bought me a T-shirt saying, I heart my cat. <laughs> Am I likely to wear that? <laughs> I spade my cat? Possibly. <laughs> I had some sort of sense of social responsibility then, at least. I club my cat, could be quite amusing. <laughs> Stir things up a bit. So, yeah. so we have that. We have nice neighbours, uh, Stan and Doris on one side, lovely old couple. Do keep me awake some nights with their breathing. <laughs> that won't be for much longer. I say that, actually. Stan's getting on. He's about 78 now, but he keeps himself very perky. He's, uh, he's got a number of hobbies which keep him young. He's a keen racist. <laughs> Publishes a little newsletter. He's actually, uh, one of my, my, my favourite quirk, he refers to the family on the other side as the darkies. <laughs> they're from Cornwall. Uh, they're nice people, and uh, oh, we had a bit of excitement recently in Peckham. I must tell you about this. They put speed bumps up in our road. You've probably seen these. They get them everywhere now. Little sort of black lump, two white triangles on, pointing out where your exhaust is going to make contact. <laughs> <laughs> I say you get them everywhere across different neighbourhoods. Dulwich proper, our neighbours, they have these rather nice integrated speed plateaus. You may have seen this type sort of work into the road, a bit of mock Victorian cobbling around the edge, a couple of potted palms. So one near us is actually twinned with a village in Provence. <laughs> We didn't get that. They were not the worst kind. I think probably the worst of those little mini fun-sized ones. Don't actually slow you down. You just veer out into the oncoming traffic. To get around them. <laughs> so we were quite grateful. And uh, the night they went up, I was optimistic. I was thinking, oh yes, things will be a bit different around here now. Children will play stick and hoop in the street. <laughs> I might keep a few free-range chickens. <laughs> Fell asleep that night, humming the Hovis tune to myself. Woke up to reality in the morning. Speed bumps don't stop cars coming down your road. If anything, they alert commuters to the fact that it's probably a handy little shortcut through to the main drag. <laughs> main thing they do, though, is to make every vehicle three times as loud, especially vans and lorries. Now, instead of the occasional meow, 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 we get now. Of course, boom, boom is an approximation. The exact sound depends on what they have in their boot at the time. They need broken bottles and scaffolding clips, I think, for some reason. So I phoned up the council, I explained it that the speed bumps were a waste of time and money. And they referred me to their slogan, which is, Wasting your time and money. <laughs> Locally. And, um, we had a bit, of a bit of a chat about it, and they pointed out the reason they put them up wasn't for our benefit anyway, it's for the children who go to school in our road. Now, I'm a bit of a traditionalist about this, I suppose, but I've always regarded the effect of traffic on children as just one of nature's little thinning out devices, really. <laughs> Generally speaking, it only takes the stupid and the slow, doesn't it, a bit of traffic? 
keeps the rest of them on their toes, but no. <laughs> Apparently we want them all to live these days. <laughs> they talk about cutting the welfare budget. That's where you start. <laughs> Some people think this isn't very PC, but I tell you what, I'd have a little bit more time for children if they'd show a little more respect to my property. I called one the other day, stuffing a crisp packet into my front hedge. Yes, now you see. <laughs> and some people don't think this is a big deal. I'm sorry, to me a hedge is integral, it's, it's personal. It's like having somebody stuff litter in your mouth. As I explained <laughs> to the police officer. <laughs> he wasn't convinced, apparently the child nearly choked or something. I don't know. <laughs> Too stupid to breathe through the nose, they don't deserve to live, do they? I've tried more humane methods. I, uh, I published a small pamphlet at my own expense entitled Harry Potter and the Hedge of Death. <laughs> quite a clear little allegory, but the school refused to distribute it. I uh, tried to install an organic deterrent, but apparently you need a license now to get a falcon unmasked in your gardens. <laughs> I know where they get it from, mind you. They're just copying their parents. There's one the other day. Pulls up outside the house, brand new 16-seater French space wagon wankmobile thing. <laughs> Oh, I'll need all these seats. I'm so fertile, I'll have that many children. Uh, and he's got his bull bars on the front, you know, his towel rack thing in case he runs into a rhino in Camberwell or something. Like that. <laughs> and he pulls up outside the house, winds his window down, casually empties, casually empties his ashtray out into my gutter. What kind of filth does that? It's like having somebody climb up on your bonnet and defecate on your windscreen. <laughs> As I explained. <laughs> we have quite a large number of police officers. <laughs> They'd run some sort of police social worker, therapist or something, I don't know whether... See if I've got the problem. It's not easy on those bonnets either. You have to use the wipers and everything. They're quite sloppy. <laughs> Got a bit of a foothold off the uh, bull bars, in fact. <laughs> and there's an irony, not a complete irrelevance in an urban environment after all. <laughs> I will tell you this, though, and I'll just leave you with this little thought-provoking insight. I had to park up in Soho the other day. Now, you can at least park in Peckham. It's free there. It's unrestricted. London is becoming ridiculous. Parked in Soho. None of your business, why? <laughs> I used a parking meter. You may be shocked to hear this. The parking meters now in Soho are charging 20 pence for three minutes. That's right, 20 pence for three minutes. That actually, it works out at four pounds an hour just to park your car. Four pounds an hour. Just to put that into some sort of perspective, that's actually more than the minimum wage. <laughs> there are people working in McDonald's in Soho who can look through the window and see a parking meter earning more than they are. <laughs> the parking meter doesn't even have to master basic English. <laughs> yes, actually, maybe that's not a good contribution to the argument. Anyway, you have been delightful. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thanks very much. I've been Simon Evans. Cheers. Good night.